How's it going YouTube? This is Levi from Bayfoils. Today we're going to be talking about some safety equipment. We're going to talk about what you need to actually get out on the water and e-foil safely. Now obviously when you consider buying an e-foil, the first thing you need to get is an e-foil itself. Depending on where you're riding, if you're riding in a group or alone, there are some other safety equipment that you should have or are even required where you are. The first thing we're going to talk about is a life vest or PFD, personal flotation device. Depending on where you are, it might be required by law or uh, the Coast Guard, you know, local, state, ranger, whoever the governing body is. Oftentimes they'll, they can cite you for writing an e-foil without a vest. In USA, the Coast Guard requires a vest when you're writing any sort of personal watercraft or PWC. That includes uh, jet ski and uh, e-foils. Now a lot of life vests out there are kind of bulky, not really comfortable, and look kind of dorky. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. The big orange ones that go around your neck, they're not really cool looking. When we're e-foiling, it's really important to make sure we have a vest that feels good, works, and looks cool. That's this vest right here. This is Liquid Force. I took a long time and tried a bunch of different vests when we were trying to look for cool e-foil vests and I found this one. Not only does it look cool, it's very slim like a wakeboard vest. It doesn't feel as bulky to wear and you can see there's a lot of protection like on the side here and on the front, a lot of padding. So if you fall on the board, it's gonna absorb some of that shock and it looks cool. It comes in a couple different colors. The black is super slick, especially if you're wearing a wetsuit underneath it. You look, it looks really cool. Reasonable price for a PFD. You're gonna spend somewhere between $100 and $200 for a quality vest. The main thing is you just wanna make sure it is Coast Guard approved. Two things to look for for Coast Guard approval is proper amount of flotation. For an adult, it's between seven and 12 pounds uh, flotation. Then also this double buckle. I know the flight board vest is really cool, has the proper amount of flotation, but it's only one buckle. That's not Coast Guard approved, unfortunately. Moving on, the next thing is a marine radio. Now this is equally as important as your life vest, mainly because depending on where you're going, this is gonna be the most reliable way to call for help or avoid any sort of potential accident. So with e-foiling, you know, there's a couple things to consider. One could be, we run out of battery. One thing I tell people buying e-foils is, you know, when they ask, so how far can I go? I always say, only go as far as you feel comfortable swimming back. If that's two miles offshore, go for it. If that's 100 feet from the shoreline, go for it. Also pack a radio. So if you are out there, mile offshore, you know, here in the Bay Area, we in from the East Bay to San Francisco is about six miles, which, you could totally do it on one battery charge there and back, but you're you're taking the risk that nothing, you have no accident. No, there's a couple things that could happen. So if you're halfway, that's a two to three mile swim either west to San Francisco or east back here to Alameda. You know, some people take their cell phones or an Apple watch or something, but those can be unreliable or difficult to use on the water. And especially if you're calling 911 on your phone, it can take time for the first responders, police department to get in touch with the fire department or the Coast Guard to send the proper people out to your area. With the Marine radio, you're directly calling the Coast Guard or the, the first responders. So the, the response time is gonna be much, much faster. And so this is hands down one of the best things to pack especially if you're going alone. So this is pretty inexpensive to have extra security in case if something happens. The next item is a helmet. Now helmets aren't necessarily required by law, but it's a smart thing to wear, especially considering how heavy the boards are. It's 65 pounds and you're going fast, upwards of 20, 20 to 30 miles an hour. Falling on concrete at that speed is not gonna feel good. Carbon fiber, board, oh, aircraft grade aluminum, if you hit your head on that going 25, you can easily get pretty hurt, if not knocked unconscious, and being unconscious in the water is just not an awesome place to be. 
Sweet makes really great helmets. You can see here there's a lot of padding and foam on the inside. This is all synthetic material, so it's not going to get really smelly or gross in the water. Their helmets out of Kevlar and plastic reinforced, so it's super lightweight, super stiff, really primo helmet. They also come with a, a like a cinch tab in the back so you can tighten it up so it fits your head nice and snug. We take safety seriously here, and this is definitely the safe thing to do, the smart thing to do. They're not cheap. If you think about how much you're spending on your e-foil, this is kind of small pennies in the grand scheme of things. Another item that's really good that we use all the time is a tow rope. So this is really good, especially if you ride in a group or with a friend. One of your friends runs out of battery or, or something, you can tie the tow rope to their handle or they can hold on to it and you can shuttle them back to the beach. I use this all the time in our lessons because sometimes people either they, they get tired, they can't make it back, they run out of battery, etc. The alternative is like you have to hold on to their handle or, or they hold on to your feet. It's really hard to balance the board that you're riding on while they're grabbing onto your feet. It, it makes it much more complicated. So this is a great thing to have in addition to the other gear, even if you're a solo rider, when the Coast Guard comes to rescue you, you have this rope that you can hand them, or, or if there's a just a friendly, you know, Good Samaritan boat, hand this rope to them, they can tie up your board, you get in the boat, and then you just tow the board behind the boat, and it makes it really easy for the rescue. Hope we kind of made it clear on what kind of equipment you also need to consider purchasing for your e-foil adventures. If you have any questions, you can always send us an email, info at bayfoils.com, or head on over to our website. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos. Peace.